Good morning, and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. My name is Reverend Mike Schoonover, and I'm the minister here at Unity Way Church. Unity Way Church is a metaphysical church. We're in the New Thought tradition, which basically means that we are truly focused on consciousness. Consciousness, our own consciousness, and how we can improve our life and truly transform our own understandings so our life has deeper meaning and deeper understandings and all the activities that we do. Uh, our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer and it's from Daily Word, uh, June the 30th, 1928. Truth gives us a blueprint to follow in our thinking. I invite you just to breathe in that divine idea blueprint. What type of blueprint do you think you have? As a good true student, we know the only blueprint that we have and use is the divine blueprint of the Christ within us. We are that sacred image and likeness. And because of that, we have 12 gifts. We call them the 12 powers in unity. And it is all in that blueprint. And as we go deeper into our own understanding, we affirm only one power, one presence, one life, one substance, only really one blueprint. And that's the blueprint of absolute divinity, which means that all health and all prosperity and all joy is ours right now for the taking. If you believe that high truth with me, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is, amen. And now here is Nita with our daily word. Good morning. Today's word for the day is forgive. The affirmation is, I begin my journey of forgiveness. Unforgiveness is a heavy bag of rocks I carry on my shoulders. When I drop the bag and begin to set the rocks aside one by one, I embark upon a healing journey. God is with and within me on this journey as my constant support and strength. When forgiveness feels difficult, I need only return my attention to Spirit's constant loving and accepting presence within me. Reestablishing my conscious connection brings warm and welcoming assistance. It is an important step in the unburdening process of forgiveness. I forgive others as well as myself, knowing each act of forgiveness increases my freedom to live a happy and fulfilling life. And from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, bear with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And the affirmation again is, I begin my journey of forgiveness. Thank you, Nita, to forgive. What a divine idea, what a divine seed that we truly can activate and plant with our own subconscious mind. The journey of forgiveness really is how we forgive ourselves for places in our life or our relationships where we seem to fall short. Forgiveness truly is a divine idea. It's also called release. I release and I let go. That's where we truly reclaim who we are, who we can be, and who we should be as truly our Christ selves. This morning, before we go into my talk, I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity. In 1890, our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, had a divine idea Divine idea that someone would hold a sacred space 24-7, seven days a week, holding a space for answered prayer for silent unity, then called the Society of Silent Help. Today, this Sunday, back at Unity Village in Missouri, back in the Silent Unity Chapel, <clears throat> there is a soul sitting in front of those prayer claims, living and holding that legacy of both Charles and Myrtle Fillmore and all the souls that have held that sacred space. So this morning, I'd like to bless that divine idea of answered prayer. 
I'd like to bless the individuals holding that sacred watch. Bless them. Hold them in the energy of divinity and know that they are there by a divine appointment and that those prayer claims are being answered in harmony, in order, and in wisdom, and in the life force within each and every one of their souls. And by the power of omnipresence, I'd like to take some of that energy from the Saint Unity Chapel and bring it forth into the sanctuary where I am delivering this talk to you. And as this energy, by the power of omnipresence, permeates this entire sanctuary, I send it forth over our property. I send it forth to wherever you may be. So as you listen to this YouTube video, that you may feel a shiver, a spiritual shiver, that you will know that you are one with the one, that right now, despite any appearances to the contrary, you are whole and complete. And if you believe that divine high, that divine high understanding of truth with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Oh, I have a beautiful little comic I want to share with you this morning. And as you can see, it's an upset husband who's a caterpillar, and he's talking about his wife, who was a caterpillar. And the caption reads, Just what is taking her so long? She only went upstairs to change. And if you look at that, ha, you look at that uh, comic, you can see she's really going to do a change. She's going to turn from a caterpillar into a butterfly. She's going to metaphor, in a metaphysical way, uh, go into another change, another state of beingness, which is also a symbol of transformation for each and every one of our lives, too. And for my minister's joke page. A little girl was watching her mother uh, do dishes at the kitchen sink. Suddenly, she noticed her mother had several strands of white hair in contrast to her brown hair. Looking at her mother inquisitively, she said, Mother, why are some of your hairs white? Her mother replied thoughtfully, Well, every time you do something wrong, and you make me cry or unhappy, one of my hairs turns white. The little girl thought and pondered this answer and then asked her mother, Mother, then how come all grandma's hair is all white? What did you do to upset her to have all her hair turn white? <laughs> stay in your seats, stay in your seats. <laughs> and we know that humor is good for the soul. It's one of those uh, times you have a reply that you think is the perfect reply, and the inquisitive mind of a child thinks a little bit deeper and is always uh, attaching A and B and B and C and putting thoughts together. Humor is good for the soul. It's good for us, and we all need to laugh more. This morning, my talk title is Kingdom Seeds. The kingdom symbolically is our own subconscious mind. It's the mind in which we live and move and have our being. And in this fertile consciousness in which we have, we get to choose the seeds that we want to bring forth into manifestation. We get to choose the type of seeds that we plant. I'd like to share with you a... Uh, verse from the New Testament, and this is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 8 through 19. Excuse me, 18 through 19. What is the kingdom of God like? Notice Jesus said, what is it like? It didn't say it is. Again, he's using a metaphor. He's using a metaphysical understanding to cause his, uh, the people that are listening to him and his disciples to think deeper deeper than the, just their surface mind. He's causing them to go deeper, which is really what metaphysics is all about. And again, what is the kingdom of God like? And to uh, what shall I compare it? Notice this, compare it. It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and threw into his own garden, and it grew and became a tree. And the birds of the air nested in its branches. 
And that one little story and that one little word picture that Jesus the Christ is giving us, he's giving us a deep metaphysical understanding of how we change and we become aware of the kingdom of God within us. And that's what we'll be discussing uh, this Sunday during this lesson. Ideas and thoughts about the seeds that we plant. What are the seeds we choose? How can we truly control the harvest, our experiences, by choosing seeds wisely? This is from our co-founder, uh, Charles Fillmore. Seed, the creative idea inherent in the word. Its nature is inherited from its parent source. What Charles is telling us is that we are like our parent. We are created in the image and likeness of divinity. That means if our parent is divine, that means we are divine. Think about that. Think of how that can change our life experiences. You know, we're not graveling, uh, you know, trying to beg for some kind of attention. We are starting off with the divinity within us. Very important. And that's the kingdom consciousness that we want to be working with as we go forward in our lives, especially in 2022. The Bible has over 27 verses that deal or talk about seeds. That means that there's a lot of seed thought. There's a lot of symbolism in the seeds within our Holy Scripture, both the Jewish Scripture and our New Testament. What is a seed? A seed is God's word as us. It says in John, in beginning was the word, and it's W-O-R-D, and it's always capitalized. It's translated in Greek as the divine logos. In Aramaic, the word logos, or the word which we see in the Gospel of John, in beginning was the word, really means mind energy. We live and move and have our being in divine mind, in this divine logos. We are a conscious being, and when we become aware of our consciousness, that we truly are not victims or martyrs, but we are metaphysicians, we truly can master our life, master the kingdom in which we want to live, which is what Jesus, our way shower, taught us. The real man and the real woman within us uh, is really only locked into external edemic thinking, uh, consciousness or personality of separation. When I speak about a third dimensional world, when I speak about a edemic consciousness, I'm not, I'm not making it negative, I'm just stating in that state of awareness, you are in separation because you believe you're separate from your good. And remember in the story with the talking snake and the, and the gods telling them not to eat from that tree. When they ate from that tree, they believed themselves to be in a divided consciousness, that they are here in God or source is someplace else. It's not true. It is not true. The seed is the generative center uh, with, through which intelligence transforms substance and produces form. Seeds are very important in the ancient world. That's how we feed ourselves. That's how ancient civilizations cultivated and harvest so they could survive. And it all comes back down to the seeds. If you want a good harvest, you got to plant and find good seeds. And any farmer will tell you, your first fruits, the best seeds you have, will bring forth the kind of life and the harvest consciousness that you want to experience in your life in relationships, whether health or prosperity, whether illumination. We need to choose wisely the seeds that we plant. Again, the seed has a generative power, a creative power within it. So you have the seed and you plant it in the soil. The soil subconsciously and metaphysically represents our subconscious mind. And when we nurture it and water it and don't talk against it or don't say it's not gonna grow or we deprive it of proper truth nourishment, it does grow, it does grow and it will produce the, if, the plant which will produce the fruit which will bring forth more seeds in our life. And again, they are using this ancient understanding of how things grow. Years ago in the ancient world, we were much more uh, closely related to the soil than we are today. Now, today we do have people having home gardens and uh, things like that are coming back really into uh, a normalcy, I will say. But back then especially, if you didn't plant it, you ain't gonna eat when it comes to winter because most places in the world have really, uh, they have winters that are real winters. A seed carries within itself a new life. 
It's very paradoxical. It must be buried. Interesting, the seed has to be buried in the soil before it comes to life. Kind of like us, we bury our desires, our divine des desires in our own subconscious mind. And again, we nurture them. We don't dig it up to see if it's, a, it's growing. We know it will. We know our blessings will unfold. But we stay attentive to what we have planted. Paradoxically, when it's buried, it brings forth new life. Seeds and those who sow are often used metaphorically in our Bible to convey ideas. In our Bible, in our scripture, many times we have seed as divine ideas or thoughts or behaviors, and it's thrown over a roadway or it's thrown over some rocky soil. We know, depending on where it lands and if it's not properly put into the soil, it's probably not going to grow. So even though we may throw 100 seeds, maybe only 25 of them really have an opportunity to really grow, which metaphysically means we need to monitor our subconscious mind. We need to make sure that we have spaces where when we plant these seeds, these kingdom seeds in our life, that they have the soil and the ability to grow and flourish. Images, images of natural growth and planting are found in all literature not just our scripture. And again, it's reflecting small beginnings, the small beginnings of an idea, producing new spiritual life forces and opportunities. Everything starts with an idea. Everything starts with a feeling. Everything starts with the desire to have something, to experience something. That's what we're really talking about. And again, we alone get to choose the seeds that we plant in our own subconscious mind. We can learn from seeds. When you throw dirt at them, seeds grow. So again, we're constantly using our subconscious mind. I think sometimes I don't think we really ponder that. Every thought we have is a prayer. So that brings us to an understanding is that we can't afford to be negative. We can't afford to be in a complaining state of awareness. Because if we do, we're planting negativity and the seeds that we're planting are going to be fragmented and we're going to get a fragmented harvest. And that's really not what we want. We, again, we need to plant positivity with our seeds, believing in the one power, one presence, one life, one substance, really one divine Christ seed within us. And in that one Christ divine seed is eternity. It's very hard to symbolically understand that, but that's truly the cornerstone of metaphysics. And this is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. This is in the New Testament, his epistle, chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Paul is knowing his audience. He's knowing the people that he's speaking to when he's on this journey and he's sending it to the people in Galatia, that they understand seeds. They understand that what we plant, we're going to get. If we plant wheat, we're not going to get corn. If we plant, uh, if we plant tomatoes, we're not going to get pineapple. We, in the ancient people, truly understood this, especially being, again, being so close to agricultural. And again, if they didn't plant it and they didn't pick the trees and they didn't harvest or preserve it the way they did in the ancient world, they wouldn't have it for a later date. Agriculture was so important to all all the ancient uh, civilizations. What is sowing seeds? What can it mean for us? Are we sowing seeds of judgment related to metaphysical way of thinking? Are we metaphysically allowing our creative, uh, our creative energy to sow things that we don't want to see manifested in our life? You see, I think sometimes we think we can turn it off and on. You can't turn it off and on. The seeds which we speak, which we feel, which we want and desire, we're seeding our subconscious mind. So if we put in mixtures, we're gonna get mixed results. Hence, we have a third dimensional world. This is how we really can change our world, again, by changing ourselves. The seed uh, products are used symbolically to stand for the natural consequences of one's actions. See, again, seeds are in actions. If we're living in a state of peace, we're not going to be uh, around or be a part of complaining 
or wanting to argue with people, both positive as well as negative. Again, everything that we do, we get to choose whether it's positive or negative. That's really what the story of a Garden of Eden really symbolically means for us. We get to choose. We get to choose how we're going to respond. Not react, we're going to respond. And many times in life, the things that we see as negative is you get a little bit of distance from the situation and you're still in a divine mind of understanding, consciousness, you realize it appeared not a good experience at the time, but it really, as you're on this side of it, you have grown, you have expanded. You're a different soul. You are truly harvesting a different life. And it came back to that situation. Many times pain and frustration are some of our greatest growth teachers. Paul warned people, you reap what you sow. And that's the law. You reap what you sow. In the first chapter of Genesis, it says after its kind. Again, the seeds, the desires, the images that we plant. If we plant happy seeds, if we plant seeds of bliss, if we plant seeds of love, if we plant seeds of deeper understanding, we will experience more. And this is from David Alt. There will always be f uh, a fertile soil. There will always be the genius seed inside you. There will always be the opportunity to combine the two. What we're talking about here is the answer. When we get to choose the seeds that we want, we get to choose the answer. We get to re choose the experience that we want in our life. So we sow the seeds simply by planting them. How you plant them is to repeat them, to believe and give them your creative life force. We give the power to the seeds. You know, the seeds can be in a bucket, but unless they're put into the subconscious mind, they're not really going to grow. God's word, our scriptures, uses metaphors to describe the concept of working to achieve positive life results. It's what metaphysics is all about. We're not here to change the world. We're not here to change our loved ones. We're not here to change our family. We're not here to change the government. We're not here to change anybody except ourself. We're here to change ourself. And as we see different ideas and thoughts into our life, that's how our environment changes. That's how the field of attraction works in our aura. The Bible also associates agricultural production. It was a very important part of the ancient people's world, their daily lives. Unlike today, again, we're somewhat removed from agricultural. You know, we just go to the store if we need flour. We just go to the, you know, we can go buy vegetables or we can just go open a can and get a can, a can of cherries. But in the ancient world, in ancient times, if you didn't plant it and the tree's not growing, you're not going to get it. So th this idea of seeds in the law of growth, the law of working with seeds and cultivating them and nourishing them and making sure they're protected from the elements was very much a part of that ancient consciousness. And that's why seeds are used, again, metaphorically and metaphysically in our scriptures, really all ancient scriptures. And this is from Yogananda. The season of failure is the best time for sowing the seeds of success. How successful do you want to be in life? How successful do you want to be at meditation? How successful do you want to be an individual in a consciousness demonstrating your Christ nature? If we're going to do that and we want to experience that, experience that we need to truly monitor our thoughts monitor our feelings make sure that we are only planting the choicest seeds of positivity into our life into our subconscious mind and not giving any energy to something that is fragmented something that is not whole something that is not complete jesus the master teacher uses this seed idea in the parable to explain how different people receive truth Christ who sows God's truth in our human hearts. The Christ within us scatters these ideas. Some fall on stony ground or, or some is choked out by weeds. However, those who receive and understand God and understand God's truth are like the good soil which nurtures the seeds. 
To have good soul soil, metaphysically, we need to have a consciousness, a soul consciousness that is open and ready to receive our good. That means if there's rocks, there's boulders, or there's concrete, we need to clear that away. We need to use some denials, let go and let God. We need to release whatever is holding that soil prisoner, really. And as we do this and we break up some of those old beliefs, we create a fertile soil within our own subconscious mind where we can bring forth more blessings in our life. We all need good seeds, but we also all need good soil. And we get to choose the soil that we're using. And this is from Unity Minister Sue Sicking. She had the church up in L.A., Unity by the Sea. Man must find and touch this untouchable self within his own being. Only you can touch the God presence within you. What she's talking about is the kingdom of heaven within us. This kingdom is within us, and this kingdom also brings its own seeds. We call them in unity divine ideas. We have 12 spectacular divine ideas that we can use to manifest, to bring forth more of our Christ nature. And those divine ideas are not fragmented. They're not broken. They're not in any type of separation. They're divine, whole ideas. And when we incorporate these ideas of faith and strength into our life, we put those into our desire seeds and we plant those in our soul subconscious. We know our harvest is going to be bountiful. In the scripture also, I would like to share with you that seed is also referred to as the descendants of many of the patriarchs. Uh, the seed of Abraham refers uh, to all his descendants. And we know we're all descendants, metaphysically, metaphorically, of Abraham, of a person who left their own country and they came to a place to have a experience with his God self within us. So in many ways we are like Abraham and all the seeds of his family that went through uh, symbolically all the way through the scripture. Those are our experiences that we're going to go through when we start this journey of truth until we awaken as a Christ within each and every one of us. I'd like to share a story with you. Once a farmer asked Buddha, why don't you work do, and do something? I co cultivate my land. I create something. You simply sit under a tree with your eyes closed and do nothing. I have been watching people come to you. You talk to them or sometimes they sit silently by your side. Uh, why don't you all do something now? The farmer was naturally very curious. He had been watching Buddha sitting under a tree by the side of his farm with people coming and going and no visible sign of work happening. And you can see this farmer really represents the Edemic consciousness that you have to really. And again, this is a story that it's, it's it's a layered story of truth. We have that farmer within us. The Buddha said, can't you see I am also a farmer. Can't you recognize me? Although my farm is of a different quality, on a different plane, I grow the crops of bliss. I sow the seeds of bliss. The people who come around and sit silently or to whom I talk, they are my work. I am sowing seeds, seeds in people's consciousness, seeds of bliss, seeds of life. In the right season, they will bloom and look into my eyes. I have bloomed. The Buddha is asking him to look into his eyes. I have cultivated my inner soul, my inner soul farm, you could say. Now it is full of flowers. Buddha is trying to really get past this man's understanding of a third dimensional world. Again, not, not saying what he was doing was bad, but Buddha was after a higher realization. And after he said this, the farmer recognized him. Remember, the Buddha said, look into my eyes. Uh, the farmer looked into the Buddha's eyes. He surrendered to the Buddha's higher consciousness, and he became blissful. He said, then I have wasted my entire life. Buddha, you 
are the true farmer. I am the false one. We're going to come back to a uh, deeper meaning of that story. This is from the great Robert Schuller of the Crystal Cathedral. Anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. How perfect. How perfect. Again, we can count the number of seeds in an apple, but in each one of those seeds is so much potential. If the seeds are cultivated and nurtured and loved and really cared after, which is really metaphysically what we do with a prayer practice. That's why we really want to have a prayer practice every single day. Which means if we want to watch these seeds grow and flourish, we need to realize where are we focusing our life? See, the focus is what is right before us. Are you here watching this lesson? This YouTube lesson, or are you doing something else, doing the laundry or ironing or letting the dog out of the house to go for a walk? I mean, I'm not saying you can't do that, but I encourage you when you go into your deep prayer times that you focus on what you want in your life. You want to give your best. You want to sow these seeds into your life. These are what we call faith seeds. Seeds are within us. See, all the seeds are within us, within divine mind. It takes, sadly, sometimes a crisis. It takes sometimes pain and frustration, sometimes depression, before we really awaken that we want to do life differently. And that's when we wake them to a Christ consciousness within us. And that's when we start nourishing and encouraging the seeds of growth that we want to see bloom and we want to harvest in our own life. And this is from the Old Testament. This is the Jewish scriptures. The great prophet Zechariah. Zechariah 8, verse 12. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. What Zechariah, this prophet, is really sharing with us is that when we do our part of planting the desire seeds that we want we want to see flourishing in our life. We know the universe, our subconscious mind, this cosmic mind in which we live and move and have our beingness will support us every step of the way. We're not alone. We have never been alone. That's a false idea. It's a counterfeit idea. So we're all really all farmers. We're all harvesting crops. Whether we like the har crops that we're harvesting is really up to us, depending on what we're planting. In metaphysics, we know that there's a divine idea. In unity, we call it the Christ seed, sometimes called the higher self, the soul self. Within this soul self is all the divinity that we will ever have. We can be no closer to the God presence now, cosmic mind, whether how many incarnations we travel through. It is within our reach right now. And if we're not at that frequency, by planning and desiring a closer relationship with the spirit within us, that's how we achieve that. That's how we have that ah, aha moment. That's how we can live in a state of bliss. That's how we bring heaven to earth taking divine fourth dimensional ideas, bringing them into this earth and living them, allowing our ore to shine them forth. So we really do help transform the world, but we're always focusing on our own consciousness. That's how change happens. This Christ seed within us is absolute desire of the divinity within us. We all have it. Now we might be asleep to it, but that doesn't mean the seed is not there. Everyone has a soul. And when you turn to that soul self within you and you remember that you are the image and likeness of this divine mind, there's nothing that can stop you from that high aware awareness or frequency. And I'd like to share some other ideas about seeds, which Jesus shared. As you sow seeds, you don't know how they will turn out. You know, sometimes you know, they turn out, sometimes they don't. Some will land on rocky ground. Uh, we could say I could sow some seeds in some grass or I could sow some seeds in, on the concrete. Chances are the seeds that get on the concrete aren't going to grow. They're not might, maybe one or two. But we really, again, need to prepare the soil of our subconscious mind. Again, we could say some will fall between the cracks and those seeds can grow, but they're going to be still somewhat hampered. Some will be carried away by pigeons or birds and some will land in nice fertile soil. 
Metaphysically, nice, fertile soil is a prayed up soul. It's a soul within each and every one of us where we are ready to receive our absolute good. There will be times when you sow in the coldness of winter. That means we're in a tough situation or we feel restricted. The soil is unforgiving and there's little or no sun. There are other times it will be harsh in a muggy summer. Again, it's not maybe the best time to plant crops, to plant the seeds. There will be no rain and the sun will bake the seeds. Sometimes the seeds will not survive. And at other times it will be springtime. And springtime is the perfect time to plant the seeds, metaphysically, when we have prepared our subconscious soil. Then there's the nighttime, and that's when the growth happens. It's the growing time. Again, the seed grows. We're responsible for our soul's soil. That's our own subconscious mind. Those mental soil conditions are under our control. We get to choose. We get to choose what the soil is going to be like. So if we have a lot of resentments and anger and frustration and some forgiveness issues from the past or the future, chances are our subconscious is, has, has a lot of obstacles that are going to not permit the seeds that we plant really to grow and expand. Our job is to keep sowing positive seeds. Our job is to keep seeding within our life the desires, the experiences of health and prosperity, of wisdom and enlightenment. Those are the seeds that we want to keep on sowing in our life. And when we do that, when we sow those seeds, we just don't go on a long trip. We watch them. We monitor them. We make sure that they are protected. So we encourage them. We empower them. Again, seeding heaven on earth. That's really what we're doing. Remember, Jesus said we're supposed to bring heaven to earth. And this is one way that we do it, by monitoring the ideas, thoughts, and feelings that we sow into our own subconscious mind. And this is from the great unity teacher, Amelda Shanklin. Let God be the consciousness. Let him be the life within. Let the human, the changing, the restless consciousness of self be absorbed by the fact and the presence of God. I invite you to let yourself just be lost in that understanding this morning. We want to be reabsorbed back into the infinity, the cosmic energy, the divine mind that we truly are a part of. Right here and right now, there is no separation. This is the one power, one presence, one substance. Now, we can think of ourselves as separate, but we know that's not true. We shape our lives. We shape the infinity we choose to live in by the choices, by the actions, and by the behaviors that we give our Christ energy to. Remember, the energy is basically neutral. The energy will be put into positive ideas or negative ideas. It'll be put into criticism ideas or praise ideas. We choose. The energy we use is the same. The subconscious will bring them forth. Again, we need to be aware of what we're planning every single day. And again, that's why we really encourage a prayer practice when you're a good, you need a true student. These mental seeds remold our life, bring change to all of our experiences. Many times... Uh, we pray about a situation that has brought us a lot of suffering or grief or depression. And when we realize that we're divine beings and that we can look at this situation and respond differently, sometimes those tough situations, that those rocks that we seem to be pulling up every time we're trying to plant a seed, we realize actually we can use it to our advantage. It helps us become stronger. It helps us become more resilient. It helps us truly seed the kingdom in which we want to live in. What kind of satisfaction do you have in your life? Truth should give us satisfaction. Peace and faith and strength and wisdom and zeal should give us satisfaction. And when we use those energies, in unity we call them our 12 powers, when we use those energy forces and allow those to nurture the seeds within our own subconscious mind of desires. That's how they grow. That's how they explode within the soil and bring forth a bountiful harvest of good in each and every one of our lives. We shape ourselves by manifesting spirit. 
We shape ourselves by manifesting spirit in us and as us. We're creating the situations. We're creating the situations. We are creating the situations and we can respond to them. Not react, but respond differently. That's what metaphysics gives us. Because if we don't believe that we're in control, then we're living in a victim or martyr consciousness. And a victim or martyr consciousness is not where we want to live because you have no power. You're simply a puppet on the string. And when the person stops wiggling the, the string, we stop moving. And that truly is not who we are. As metaphysicians, we control how we are going to show up. And this is from Bert McCoy. Inside the seed are many trees. Inside you are many kingdoms. This morning, I'd invite you to step into a bigger kingdom of your own understanding. Not my kingdom. You can't go into my kingdom and I can't go into your kingdom. We live in our own kingdoms within. And the subjects of what we want to experience in consciousness are the desire seeds that we plant. A seed is neither, a seed is neither, it, it is what it is. It's what it's planted with. So uh, a seed neither fears light nor darkness. It's a very powerful and profound metaphysical truth. A seed neither fears light or darkness, but uses both to lavishly grow. Before there was light, there was darkness. Sadly, in a Western understanding and thinking we have equated darkness or really the womb of creation as something negative it's not true in the ancient world we know there is only light but if there's also dark light we could call it dark matter but we know it's the one presence unfolding onto itself it's the same presence but at a different frequency we get to choose we get to choose how we're going to show up this is from norman vincent uh, appeal. Every problem has in it the seeds of its own solution. If you don't have any problems, you don't have any, you don't get any seeds. And what I love about what he's sharing with us is through our problems and our frustrations, we can switch those tough situations and find the strength within us to face what we need to face, to grow and expand, and again, not be victims, to work out our own salvation, to work out our own liberation. And we do that by seeding the thoughts, seeding the ideas, seeding the feelings that we want to harvest out of our own subconscious mind. We nourish the seeds. Let us nourish our new seeds as new beginnings. Every seed can be looked at, uh, every new idea can be looked at as a new beginning. Are you willing this Sunday in 2022 to step into a new beginning, a new Christ life, a new Christ kingdom? Seeds release their innate cosmic activated energies. You don't have to tell a seed what to do. The seed already knows what it is, just like us. The Christ is already within us. The divinity within humanity is already seated deep within our soul. But what we need to do is awaken to it and to believe it 100%. Not partially, but 100%. This is from Susan Laurie Parks. Each moment is perfect and heaven sent in that each moment holds the seeds for growth. The seeds of growth are within our hands, within our grasp, within our practice, practicing in the presence of God, having a prayer practice. You can look at the daily word as sowing seeds into our life every day. That is a way of seeding within us positive, uplifting, true truth understandings that truly can change our life and ripple through all our experiences by just believing not just reading, but believing what is written in the daily word or reading a sacred book or studying a sacred text. All those have the ability to shower us with seeds and more seeds of divinity that cause us to grow and expand and be who we have come to be. Show me your seeds and I'll show you what your harvests will be. See, if you plant tomatoes, you're not going to get weak. If you plant corn, you're not going to get potatoes. 
Remember the scripture says after its kind, which is again with seeds. The seeds know what they are. We just got to plant them and nourish them and believe in them and know by the power of spirit they're going to grow and expand and be just what we need for this experience right now. And then later on, tomorrow we can plant some more seeds or in a couple hours we can plant some different seeds. That is the choice that we get to make when we live in a kingdom consciousness and have remembered who we are. And in closing, I'd like to leave you with this idea. When life hands us dirt, when life hands us troubles, when life seems to hand us what we don't want, we don't want a bucket full of dirt and we don't want a bucket full of problems, let's instead start planting kingdom seeds. That's how we change it. We can use that dirt to plant the seeds. We can plant ideas. We can reshape this situation. So the dirt is really a good thing. It's our call to plant different seeds. May this be the Sunday, the Kingdom Sunday, that we awaken to a deeper realization of who and what we are. May this be the Sunday, the desire to plant whole seeds is the only thing that we plant. And we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be I invite, invite you to imbue it as a seed of life, a seed of prosperity, a seed of good fortune, a seed of blessings upon blessings. You can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. You can go to unityway.com and also do an electronic donation. But whatever your gift may be, I invite you to hold it. Even if it's in your own mental mind's eye, hold it and seed it and know after its kind. That as you plant this seed into the receptive soil of your own subconscious mind, be prepared for blessings to be showered upon you, more blessings and more blessings. And we believe that to be so. And if you join me with our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for the seeds of life. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. I invite you this Sunday to think of the prayer of protection. Think of the protection seed. The seed of protection is truly the innate divinity within each and every one of us. May we pray that all souls awaken to this higher idea of perfection, that they may walk forward into the life that they choose to live. And we say this not only for our planet, not only for the conflicts that are happening in the world, but also for the entire planet, really the vastness of the cosmos. May all creation truly, truly speak this prayer. If you join with me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. This Sunday, I invite you to find some dirt in your life. I invite you this Sunday to plant the seeds of your desires, your highest desires and aspirations. And let us be welcoming of the divine blessings of the harvest that is going to outpicture in your life and my life. We'll see you next Sunday. Keep planting those seeds and have a great week. And we just say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.